All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to our structural analysis sequence. And in this video, we're gonna do an, a simple example problem on using a method of virtual work or the unit load method on finding uh, the displacement of a truss. And so here in this problem, we've got this truss that's given here with the loading of 10 kilonewtons and five kilonewtons to the left and uh, um, pin supported at B and roller at A. Uh, and we've got every member has a cross-sectional area of 500 millimeters squared. Every member is made of steel uh, of this truss, so 200 GPA. And then the geometry is shown, two meters vertical, 1.5 meters horizontal. That makes this a three, four, five triangle. So that makes our little angle calculations pretty easy. And with the loading given, what we'd like to find is the horizontal displacement of point C right here. And so what we're going to do in this problem is apply this uh, principle or method of virtual work here where we apply a unit force or load in the direction and location where we want to find that deformation, this real deformation here. And we're going to calculate using a virtual structure, which is with the virtual loading, the internal virtual load, and then the real internal deformation, which is basically the internal deformation due to real loads right here. And what we're going to do, how we're going to do that is we're going to first draw a virtual structure with a virtual load on it, do some statics on that virtual structure to calculate those little ends right here, that, that internal virtual load, and then do some internal deformation, calculate the internal deformation due to the real load. And that takes doing some statics on the real structure and the axial deformation of each member, NL over EA. Okay. And so the first things first, I've already took the liberty of drawing the virtual structure here. Uh, down here with a horizontal load where I want to find, you know, I want to find the horizontal displacement of point C. So I apply a virtual load at point C horizontally. And I've got, you know, in theory, I've got reactions here, BY and AX here. And what I want to do is calculate is now with this virtual loading, I want to do my statics and calculate the internal forces right here. So that's, that basically means that I'm solving for n of each member n okay so n right here the internal force and in this case here and i'm going to show you what this table is for in a second but in this here uh you know the the reactions are pretty simple if i take moments about point a i will get that bx equals one right here if i sum forces in the vertical this is zero and then um uh, if I sum forces in the horizontal, it'll tell me that this is zero here too. And what that tells me even more is that if I isolated this joint B using the method of joints or even the joint D here, this would tell me that these are zero. And if I isolate this right here, uh, I would tell me if I sum from an isolation of joint B, this is zero. And this is a, this has a one unit force in tension. And then I go through and I sum forces in the vertical over here at joint C. If I, if I take joint C, isolate it using method of joints, and I sum forces in the vertical, this will tell me that this diagonal is also zero. So really, you know, my only member that has an internal force is member BC here. All right, so you know, that, that statics was pretty simple. And hopefully that's how all your problems work out, but you know. The reality is not not quite. And so here, one of the things I, that is always you know popular in textbooks is is to create a table. You know, your equations here have this summation in it for each member. And a truss has quite a few members. This one only has one, two, three, four, five, but you could be dealing with mem trusses that have ten members, you know. Uh, it, it, it could it could grow, right? And so what you want to do is have this table. It's kind of like when you calculate the moment of inertia and, and you have that summation for the parallel axis theorem. Well, it's just kind of a way to organize all that. And so what what is obvious, what is a lot of times recommended is to have each member, and usually if you're doing this in a spreadsheet or in a program or some sort of loop, you know, you have these as numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, right? But here we just label them A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, A, C. These are all the members in my truss. I calculated the internal forces in each tr in each member due to the virtual loading, and so member A B is zero, uh, member B C is one, and it's a plus one because it's in tension. Uh, member C D is zero, member D A is zero, and the diagonal is zero. Well, that was easy. Right here, the next column I have is here. This is what we're going to be doing next. Is is the internal force. Uh, due to the real loading and then also the length of each member here. This is a length right here And then you know uh, a lot of times this would be NL over EA to fit the summation so that I would have another column over here 
N times NL over EA. And I could just sum up this last column right here. And it would really just give this to me right here. But but in this case, in this problem, all the E's and the A's are the same. These things are constant. So since EA is constant, I don't ha I can factor out this EA and introduce it le later. And so I could actually create a, a column N times NL, sum it up down here, sum up this column, and then divide by EA at the end. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll just go ahead and, and do it this way. And then maybe in another problem, we'll have something where, with all the EAs or different, okay, or different materials or something. But in anyways, here, let's go ahead. The next thing we want to do is draw the real structure with the real loading and calculate these internal forces. So here, if I go down here, I, 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 go, I went ahead and did the real structure for us just to, to save some time on this video. And here's my loading uh, on the real structure, the real loading, same geometry. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, bx and by if i use statics basic statics i would get ax is 7.5 kilonewtons pointing to the left bx is 12.5 kilonewtons pointing to the right and by is 10 kilonewtons upwards now what i want to do is use the method of joints and if you are already familiar with the method of joints you can probably fast forward this and just go straight to the table in maybe a minute or two um, but here using the method of joints i could start by isolating joint b here and if i if i do joint b right here i would get that i have let's see 10 kilonewtons up this way 12.5 kilonewtons this way an internal force nbc this way and a vertical here nba and just from some of the forces in the y and the, some of the forces in the x i just I, you know this is going to tell me that this is 12.5 kilonewtons and this is 10 kilonewtons so hopefully that was pretty straightforward and then going from there i can go to joint joint c uh, one thing i didn't mention a second ago was that if i if i went to joint d here i would know from some of the forces in the horizontal this is a zero force member here okay so it's always nice to find your zero force members and find and, uh, and here this member dc if i Again, I don't want to have to draw this, but here, if I if I have the joint D, some of the forces in the vertical isolate that, this would be 10 kilonewtons in tension right here. So that's also nice to know. And this right here was 12.5 newtons, kilonewtons in tension as well right here. And now we have to figure out what the force is in this diagonal. Oh, I knew that this was 10 kilonewtons in, uh, in tension also right there. So that's that's good, right? That's good to know. And so I could isolate joint A or joint C to calculate um, this the internal force in member AB. So if I if I go to joint C, joint C here, bam, right here, uh, I have five kilonewtons to the left. Uh, tension twelve point five kilonewtons this way. Uh, vertical 10 kilonewtons tension 10 kilonewtons this way and then i got to figure out what this diagonal n b n c a is right here and if, if i did the sum of the forces sum of the forces in the um vertical let's say let's go this way as positive equals to zero i would get minus 10 kilonewtons minus n c a times the vertical component of that which is four fifths equal to zero and that tells me nca is negative 12.5 kilonewtons 